Hello everybody, welcome to the Zentangle Project Pack series. This is Julie, and this lesson is part of Project Pack number 13. The theme of this project is transitions, and we are looking forward to exploring ways to blend and layer tangles. We will be using some familiar tools and perhaps some new to you tools to create interesting textures, layers, and elegant transitions from one tangle to another. We will also be playing along with the metaphor of transitions and the importance of transitions and change in our everyday lives. We will be working with the materials found in your Zentangle Project Pack 13 envelope. If you do not have the envelopes, we do encourage you to follow along with whatever materials you have at, at home. Zentangle Project Pack envelopes can be purchased at Zentangle.com and also from some certified Zentangle teachers. We do recommend watching the introduction video to this series first. It can, the link to it can be found in the description below, but the rest of the Project Pack number 13 videos can be viewed in any order. Today, we are going to be working with a black Micron 01. We're gonna be working with a Sakura Microperm 01. A glaze pen, this is the three-dimensional ink from Sakura the sketch and wash pencil from General Pencil. I also have graphite and white charcoal pencil and some tortillons and a paintbrush to use with the sketch and wash. To the side here, I also have a little dish with some water in it that we'll be using later on. And today we're gonna to be working on a three and a half inch square white Zentango tile. But again, if you don't have these materials, just gather what you have and explore along with us. So to begin, I have my black Micron 01. And we're going to be working with the Tango Aquafleur today. And we're going to begin by drawing a rather large blob-like shape. Blob, a very technical term that takes up a good portion of our tile. And then again, still working with our Micron 01, I'm going to begin by drawing some bands that all start from the same spot and then go out around our blob here. So if you want to um, watch first as I walk you through this first one, I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to draw a slightly curved line that then hooks around to sit on top of our outline here. And then I'm going to begin in the same spot and briefly I will just trace along the line I already drew, but then I will begin a new line that again hooks around and sits on top of our outline. And then I'm going to draw an arc that connects this point to this point. And so this gives the illusion that this band wraps around that blob. And so I'm going to repeat drawing these bands, all starting from this same point. If you want to follow along for just a moment. One, again, start from the same point, briefly, just trace along the line I already drew, but then it begins to branch off. And then draw an arc to connect those points. And I'm going to keep going. My lines are not straight. I've got a little curve to them. And at this point, my next one I'm going to draw is not going to curl this way. I'm going to switch and I'm going to curl in the opposite direction. But again, still starting at this one central point.
And as I get closer to the bottom, my little bands are getting smaller. And there is the beginning of Aquafleur. I believe Rick and Maria, if I remember correctly, Maria deconstructed this tangle while on vacation somewhere warm and tropical. And that is where I'm picturing I am today, somewhere warm and tropical instead of cold New England weather at the moment. So normally when you draw Aquafleur, you would then fill in these bands with solid black ink. And that's an is always an option you can go to today, but we're going to fill it with another tangle. And if you've watched any of my Project Pack videos before, you know that one of my favorite things to do is to fill a tangle with another tangle. And today we're going to fill it with Shattuck. So I'm gonna begin in this first band right here, and I'm going to start right down here and I'm going to draw a tiny little band. And then I'm going to aura that band. And I'm gonna add a couple more auras. Then I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna see where the corner right here where this band meets the edge. I'm going to do a little arc. And I'm going to aura that arc a couple more times. Then I'm going to turn my tile and in the opposite corner I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw an arc and then another one, aura, and then a few more. And I'm going to continue this until I have filled this entire band with Shattuck. And you'll see later on why Shattuck is one of my favorites because it's fun to shade. You can really give it a lot of depth and dimension with the graphite and the white charcoal. So once we get to the top here, you have these lines that we created when drawing the original Aquafleur. You're just gonna ignore them. And I know it might be hard. It was hard for me at first to be like, how can I hide them so we don't see them? But once we're done shading at the very end and we've added all of our layers, you don't see them at all. So there we have Shattuck. So I'm just gonna do the same thing in the rest of my bands. And these really narrow areas, it's really hard to see them going in the different directions, and that's fine. I love the theme of this project pack, Transitions. It's not just on paper and tangling and transitioning from you know, one tangle to another or how you layer them and incorporate them together. But just in everyday life, I think we are constantly in a state of transition, whether it's from one place to another, one stage of our life to another, you know, even one part of our day to another. And one thing I always try to remember, whether it's on a tile or in life, is you know, to give yourself a little grace when you're in transition. And we're not striving for perfection. And just overall look at the bigger picture, not focus so much on each on each little change. I think when we're tangling, 
sometimes we get so caught up on a line that may have gone wrong or one that we have put somewhere that we really didn't want to, or even these lines here that we already put down and we're ignoring, you know, it can, we can get so focused on them and how to hide them or how to fix them. But when we're finished with our tile, you're not going to notice them. You're not going to notice those little hiccups in the transition, but you're going to see this beautiful tile. This past year, I went through a big transition. I became a mother and it has been the most wonderful, amazing, beautiful, chaotic, stressful transition I've ever gone through. And I've always, I just have to take a step back and have a little grace with myself. I'm learning, I'm growing. And while it's easy to obsess about the small little day-to-day -day things, at the end of the day, my baby is wonderful and he's healthy and he's happy and that that is what matters most. When we begin a tile and we transition from beginning to ending the tile, we have we usually have some sort of idea maybe of how we want the tile to turn up, some sort of inspiration or idea in our head of what we're doing. But as we begin to tangle, sometimes different strokes lead us different places and either things don't go quite as we planned and we have to adapt and change. Or maybe we found new opportunities that were more exciting than what we originally planned, but it's kind of, I've tried to approach each day of motherhood the same way. I have an idea of how I want my day to go. I would like my baby to be fed and safe and happy. And, and as long as at the end of the day, that's where I end up. How I got there doesn't matter so much. So there we have all of our Shattuck and our Aquafleur. I'm going to put my cap on my Micron 01 and set it aside. And next we're going to be working with the glaze pen. It looks like a Jolly Roll pen. And if you haven't used it, you might want to turn it over and just warm up the pen on the back side a little bit. And we're going to be using this pen in these spaces right here with the Tangle Flux. And just in case you're unfamiliar with the Tangle Flux, I'm gonna do it on the back here with my Micron just so you can really see it first real quick. But Flux is like these little petals that are gonna grow inside those spaces. But instead of doing them with our Micron, we're going to be working with this glaze pen. And when working with this pen, you really want some good light because it is clear. So you're gonna have a little trouble um, seeing it, but if you get some really good light and you get familiar with turning your tile, you'll really be able to see where you put the ink down. So I'm going to start in this area right here. I'm going to draw my first petal. Let's see, Let's see what's going on there. These just need a little bit of a light touch. You don't want to press down too hard. And I'm going to fill the space with my petals. But as you get started, I want you 
to not fill the entire space. I want you to leave a little bit of space along these edges right here. So don't go all the way up. So you can see how I've stopped. I'm gonna leave this area blank. And I'm gonna do the same thing all around my aquifer. They don't all have to be the same size or going in the same direction. This is a very organic tangle that just kind of grows as you go along. And in these areas where I have a lot of space. I'm going to go back and put little orbs. So you can see. If the space is too small, I'm not going to force it, but where they are a little larger, let me go back. And if flux isn't your favorite tangle, feel free to fill these spaces, which whatever works for you. And I think that's something else to important, important to remember when we're tangling in our lives that what works for one is not gonna work for everybody. There is no one size fits all life. So once I have filled all my space with flux, you can see I'm going to set my glaze pen aside and I'm just going to give it a couple minutes to dry. These spaces over here are probably dry since I started with them, but overall you, it just needs about like three, five minutes tops really to dry, but you can see all along in my aquifer is that flux. And after you've given it a few minutes to dry, I'm gonna use my sketch and wash, wash pencil. It's from General Pencil. This has been such a fun one to work with and to play around with. And I'm going to go to those spaces at the top where I did not keep going with my flux. I left a little space at the top and I'm going to fill those with the sketch and wash. Being pretty liberal with how much I'm putting down. If you accidentally go over your sketch, your um, glaze that is perfectly fine. Sometimes you just don't see it there. And this one I actually did go right to the edge. I didn't, I forgot what I told you all, but that's fine. We'll just go over it. And once we have our sketch and wash, I'm gonna pick up my paintbrush. I'm gonna dab it in just a little bit of water, not too, too much. You might need to, if this is your first time using the paintbrush, swirl it around a little bit. And I'm just going to take my wet paintbrush with not a whole lot of water on it because I don't wanna flood the entire surface. I just wanna start by activating that sketch and wash. And 
and dragging it over the glaze that I've already put down. So picking it up from here and bringing it down. And so you can see the glaze acting as a resist. Get a little bit more water when you need to. And I'm, I'm keeping it contained as best as I can. It's not going to be perfect to the, these sections, but if some goes out of your aquaflor into your bands, don't worry, because there are no mistakes. And whatever happens, we will just we'll work with it. I know in the introduction video, Molly showed you how she really likes to kind of flood her tile with water. And so that is also an option if that is the technique you like as well. I like to work in layers. So I just add a little bit of water at a time, see when I need more. So whatever speaks to you, however you prefer to work. This is, oh, you know, these lessons are always suggestions, whatever works for you. It is your art. And you can always go back if you see an area that you want to add a little bit more of your sketch and wash. This pencil is great, works dry, wet, whatever. Whatever suits you, but I always say when working with these shades of gray, you can always go back and add more. So when you are at a place where you have added as much of the sketch and wash as you want. We're gonna let this dry um, for a couple hours, at least get nice and dry. You can set it aside and when um, check on it in a couple hours and then come back and we're going to um, add some shading, some graphite and some white charcoal to a tile and I'm excited about that. So I will see you all soon. Welcome back everybody. We have our dry tiles, our aqua fleur that we put the sketch and wash over. This already looks awesome, even before we've added some more shading. But we are going to give it a little bit more dimension. So the first pen I'm going to use is the Microperm Black 01. And this is the one that looks just like the Micron, except it's a gray barrel and it says Microperm on it. This is a different ink. And the reason why I'm choosing this one is because this, um, ink is great for writing on like a plasticky surface. So like this glaze, this raised ink um, is more of a plastic surface than the paper. And the Micron, the Pigma ink doesn't work great on that. It's really meant for a matte surface. So I'm just going to take my micro perm and I'm going to redefine the lines of these bands. And in case some of your glaze pen overlap these lines when you were putting it down, that's why we're using the micro perm. So it will go right over it. We're just making them a little bit more bold, 
in case they got a little muddied up. And then I'm done with the microperm. I'm gonna set that aside and I'm going to pick up my graphite pencil. And I'm going to begin shading my shattuck. And we're add, gonna add in a couple different layers of shading to this. So the first one is I'm going to find the top arc of each of my sections and add a little graphite. Remembering to turn your tile. I'm going to do that in each one. So again, down at the bottom here, it's kind of hard to see. So you don't need to add a whole lot, but as you get, as your band gets wider, you have these bigger sections and you can really see how it gives a little bit of dimension. And then I'm going to pick up my tortillon and I'm going to go back and I'm going to soften those areas where I put the graphite down. Don't spread it out too far, but just soften it a little bit. And then once that is done, I'm going to go back with my graphite pencil. I'm going to add some graphite underneath this top band on each one. And again, go back with my tortillon and soften it. And next I'm gonna take my white charcoal pencil and I'm gonna to go to each of these little sections and put a little bit of highlight in the middle. each one. Do the same here. These real narrow areas, you're not going to get a lot of shading there and that's fine. And then I'm going to take my tortillon. I have a different one for my white and just go soften it just a little bit. Mostly in those bigger areas. The smaller ones I'm just going to leave be. You can already see how the shattuck has so much more dimension. So I'm going to go back with my graphite pencil again. And underneath each of these bands right here, I'm going to put some graphite all the way down. We have so many layers going on here. We have the sketch and wash, the graphite, the pens, the glaze. And each one of these layers on its own, if you focus too much on it, you will find mistakes.
imperfections, all of those things. But when you put them all together, it really creates this beautiful piece. You see how they all work together. And finally, I'm going to go back with my Micron 01 and these top arcs that we put down for each section. I'm going to go and I'm going to redefine them. Ever so lightly. But they all got lost a little bit in all the shading that we did. And then to add my chop, I'm going to use my glaze pen. And my chop today is just going to be a J. And on a different piece of paper, I'm going to add some of my sketch and wash. Take my paintbrush, get a, just a little bit wet to activate it. And give that a minute to dry. And there you have it. We have Aquaflor, Shattuck, Flux, lots and lots of different layers. And I want to thank you all so much for tangling along with me today for this lesson in project pack number 13. Can't wait to see what you all create. Thank you guys.